Often, the most perplexing mysteries have the simplest solutions. The most complex questions, the simplest answers. Sometimes, we seek long and hard, only to find the solutions and answers lie right before us. In a reference book under T, for the Twilight Zone. Wiley Whitlow, where the devil did you come from? My farm. Walk. You walked all this way from your place? Anything to get out of that house. I got a daughter getting married in two weeks. I know what you mean. Got two daughters on my own. Tell you what, you give me a hand getting this tire on where it belongs, and I'll give you a lift back. Don't need no lift back. It's got to be five or six miles, even cutting across the fields like you did. Mr. Henrys, would you mind coming over here a minute? Yeah, Wiley? Over here. Sayers. Uh, where are the others? What others? When I called Senator Westphalen and explained the urgency of the situation, I thought for sure he'd send a team. I'm afraid I'm the team. Doesn't he understand what's going on look, here? This lab kit may look like it only weighs 60 pounds, but it actually weighs closer to 80. Do you think we could go wherever it is we're going so that I could set it down? <laughs> Sorry. Come on. Thanks. As I understand it, the first few cases weren't that unusual. The, uh, town derelict and some of his cronies? Then it started spreading. First it was the farmers, then a couple people who worked at the bank, then the mayor. It's over 25 people now. And there's no working profile? All age groups, all races, all income brackets? They just suddenly started going... Crazy. Insane. This morning it was my father. This is Mr. Strickland? Uh-huh. Her father. Yeah. Thanks. Hello, Mr. Strickland. My name's Edward Sayers. Hello, Sayers. I'd like to ask you to sit down, but as you see, my house is being redone. I'd like to ask you some questions. Ask anything you want. I'm no gossip. <laughs> That's what made me a big man in this town. I met your daughter. She's very nice. <laughs> daughter? I don't have any daughters. I got sons, nine of them. All big strapping farmers, just like their old man. <laughs> daughter. Mr. Strickland, what happened this morning? Do you remember? Yes. Yes, I remember. The milk on my cereal was sour. I had to speak to my wife about it. Where is your wife? She's dead. She's been dead about five years now. But you spoke to her this morning about the sour milk. Well, wouldn't you? Then what happened? I went out to get the paper. Damn delivery boy threw it right over the house. Never could find it. <laughs> and, then, and then old Mrs. Hotchkiss stopped by. <laughs> ah! Ah! Mrs. Hotchkiss's husband used to run the used car lot. 
About two days ago, she came home from the market, found him trying to walk across her clothesline. 72 years old. You don't mind this, do you? No, not at all. It's the only station we've got around here. Do you have any brothers? No, no sisters either. I'm an only child. Why? I'm so glad you and your friend could stop by, Amanda. It's been so quiet out here these past couple of days. And how is your husband, Mrs. Hotchkiss? I didn't get by the hospital to see him today, but I saw him yesterday. We talked a little. Not much, though. I saw Amanda's father, Mr. Strickland, earlier today, and he mentioned that you stopped by to see him this morning. Lemon? No. Just a neighborly visit. I went by to ask him about planting marigolds. He has such a green thumb. When I saw him, he seemed perfectly all right to me. There was a woman once whose husband was in a coma. One night, she prayed that if he would come out of it, she would give up a year of her own life. The next morning, he awakened from the coma to find her dead. I guess the moral there is, don't make any deals and don't ask any questions. Questions. Get something to tie your wrist, Amanda. A towel or something. Sorry. We found some sandwiches in a vending machine. Great. Careful, they're hot. I nuked them in a microwave. Thanks. You find anything? <sighs> Nothing. In the air or the water. All toxic contents are well below the EPA accepted safe levels. So it's nothing people breathed or drank? Doesn't look like it. You know, I've been thinking. Maybe it's a disease. A very contagious disease. Amanda. No, it fits. I've been tracing it back. It's like some weird chain letter. Jesse Fielding went insane right after he talked to Sarah Moss. Sarah, right after she talked to the mayor, and the mayor had just been to the bank to see Jack Henry's. My dad came down with it after Mrs. Hotchkiss came over, and she had just been to the hospital to see her husband the day before. A disease. A contagious disease that uh, makes people crazy. Here are the results of each patient's initial physical examination. As you'll see, Dr. Benitez found nothing somatically wrong with any of them. Nothing to indicate any exposure to a contagious disease. Okay,
It is extremely important that I talk to Dr. Carroll right away. Yes, please, the minute he checks in. You have the number. Thank you. He'll call back. He's the head of my department in Washington. He can authorize a full military quarantine of the whole town, maybe even this whole section of the state. How you doing? Well, using the information we got from the hospital, I've been able to trace back the various lines of who came into contact with whom as far back as I could. Some of the lines dead end. One or two of them come back to the same point of origin, same person. Maybe he's the original source of the virus or whatever it is. Andrew Potts? Yeah, local crackpot, 45, 50, lived in Loma Valley all his life. It does odd jobs around. Did odd jobs. Did? He's been locked up in the hospital for a couple months now. You know who we should talk to? His brother. They lived together in their folks' place out at the end of Woods Road. He was a college professor, my college professor, as a matter of fact. He taught Far Eastern studies. This brother, he hasn't been admitted to the hospital? Uh, no, he hasn't. How do I get to this Woods Road? A couple of miles west on the highway. Hey, what about me? You have to stay here in case my boss calls back. And what if this Mr. Potts is like the others? Like Mrs. Hotchkiss? Then I'll set a new land speed record getting held back here. Trust me, I'm no hero. band with their latest out of Nashville, yellow hair and big blue eyes. And this is Wild Bill Oaks coming to you from KFEJ Radio 660. National Weather Bureau reports clear skies and warm temperatures today with lows tonight in the high 50s. And now back to music on the Valley's own radio station, KFEJ. I am Jeffrey Potts. How do you do? My name is Sayers, Edward Sayers. Do you like my house, Mr. Sayers? Well, I, uh, yes. Yes, I do. Very much. How long have you been working on it? Oh, two, three months now. Ever since I got back. Back from where? The Orient. I went to study. I think I was going to write a book. I don't recall exactly, but then I found out, and it, it really didn't matter anymore. Found out what? The meaning, Mr. Sayers, the meaning. The meaning of what? Everything. Man's purpose and destiny. Life after death. God. Devil. Existence, everything. And it is so simple. It is all so very simple. You want to know? Who have you told? Only my brother. It was supposed to be a secret. But knowing my brother, it probably isn't anymore. Are you sure you wouldn't like to know what it is? No. No. Well, you'll be the only one left in town who doesn't. As I have decided, it's time for me to share this wonderful secret with all my neighbors. How? Well, old Har Faraday down at the radio station is always happy to let a neighbor have a little airtime to say hello to everybody in town.
their new summer festival is going on out at the Tatchy Reservation all through the month of June. Advanced tickets are available through the county agent's office. Prices are adults $12, teens $8, and children under 12 are free. All proceeds this year go to the Tatchy Reservation School, where the hope to sell... Good friend and neighbor to all of us has just stopped by the studio to say howdy to y'all. Well, he'll be talking to us right after this. We're back now, and as I mentioned, a neighbor and friend of all of ours stopped by today, Professor Jeffrey Potts. How are you doing today, fine. Professor? Well, just fine. I uh, haven't seen you around town much well, lately. I've been busy doing some work around my house, but uh -huh. I wanted to stop by today to tell all your listeners something. Okay, shoot. Well, I, I thought your listeners would be interested in knowing what the meaning of life is. Well, I know I've always wanted to know what the meaning of life is. Uh, sure, Professor, go ahead. Tell us all what the meaning of life is. Uh, come closer, everybody. Shut off the radio! Come closer to your radios. Turn it off! Well, everybody. Shut it off! The meaning of life is... I'll What's explain later. Come on, we gotta get away from here. But Edward! Amanda, there isn't time. Edward, you're being rude. Man is a questioning creature. Constantly striving for answers, but there is some knowledge for which he is not yet ready. Secrets that once learned overwhelm him. Secrets that for now are best left undisturbed in the Twilight Zone. 